Hello, my name is Joshua Edwards, and the piece of artwork that I have picked for the final project is titled Death in the Sick Room. A little bit of history on Death in the Sick Room. This piece of art was made in 1893 by Edward Munch. The painting depicts a mourning family at the bedside of a dying loved one, Munch's sister Sophie, who can't really be seen in the picture, but this is her figure sitting in this chair. And she died of tuberculosis in 1877. Munch created the painting in 1893, but the event took place in 1877. And the characters in the picture are depicted at the age they were when the painting was made, not when the event took place. Today, the painting can be found at the Munch Museum in Oslo, Norway. Some connections to death that present itself in the painting. Munch also called the painting the moment of death, which immediately tells us that there's connections to death and that death is the theme of this painting. The reason that the characters depicted in the painting are not the age that they were when the event took place is because Munch wanted to show the death of Sophie would forever affect the members of the family. Each character in the painting is showing a different way to mourn. The character in the back left facing the wall, which is actually believed to be Munch himself, right here. The younger sister is sitting in the chair with her head down, right here. The two characters that are sitting beside Sophie during her last moments, right here. The man looking at the chair from a distance, which is believed to be her father. And finally, the female character staring straight ahead and obviously exhausted and distraught, which is believed to be her mother, is depicted right here. You can see the bags under her eyes that show exhaustion. And you can see that everyone in this painting is grieving in their own separate ways. Connections to death can be made with each of these characters. For instance, the younger sister in the chair cannot even look at her sister, but she's sitting in the same position. Head down, arms down, sitting down. So, because this is the case, it could be inferred that she may be destined to an untimely death, just like her sister. And we'll take one last look at the painting. And now we'll go into the summary of the Phaedo. The Phaedo is the story of Socrates' last hours and the philosophical arguments that took place during that time. Now, the reason that these were Socrates' last hours is because Socrates is in prison facing death for being an atheist and for the corruption of the youth in Athens. Socrates was not guilty for either one of these charges, and he proved it philosophically, but he was still sentenced to death by the courts of Athens. During his last hour, Socrates, Socrates begins his arguments and dialogues by claiming that true philosophers should welcome and look forward to death because death releases the soul from the limitations of the body, allowing the chance to obtain true wisdom. The discussion of death is one of the main themes in the text, and Socrates elaborates on this topic in four separate arguments. The first argument is the argument from opposites, which, which suggests that everything that exists in this universe comes from an opposite. Death comes from life, Tall comes from short, big comes from small, and basically what that means is you have, to be, you have to live before you can die, you have to be short before you can be tall, you have to be small before you can be big, things like that. Just He says that everything comes from opposites. The second argument is the theory of recollection, which is where Socrates suggests that we learn everything by recollecting it and because that's the case there's no way that our soul was born with our body our soul had to have existed before our body because we can learn things by recollecting it 
The third argument is the argument from infinity, which suggests that there is a definite line between things that are mortal and immortal, material and immaterial, visible and invisible. And Socrates claims that because you can show these differences between the soul and the body, you can't see the soul, because you can't see the soul and you can't, there's no material that the soul takes up, Socrates suggests that the soul ought to be immortal and survive death because of the fact that it's invisible and immaterial. The fourth argument is the argument for forms, which Socrates claims all things in the universe come from. He talks about forms of wisdom, forms of beauty, strength, all the things that are invisible to the body's eye are the forms. Socrates then talks about what he believes happens to the souls after death, and he only gives us two options. Either the soul dies with the body, and there is eternal sleep after death, or the soul leaves the body and can interact with the pure forms that exist in the universe, which is what a philosopher trains his whole life for. Socrates then says his goodbyes and drinks the poison that he was sentenced to, and dies with the hopes that he will finally be able to to experience the form of wisdom. Now we'll be looking at some connections between the art and the reading. One connection that could be made between death in the sick room and the Phaedo is that many of the characters are mourning the death of a loved one. The characters in the Phaedo do not understand why Socrates must die, because he's innocent for both the charges. However, the court still sentence him to death. And Sophie's family's mem family members are in the same situation. Sophie has an uncurable disease and there's nothing that they can do. Since both groups of people are having to deal with an untimely death of a loved one. That's the connection there. Another connection that can be made between the painting and the reading is that death and grief are both lonely, but those grieving are unified in their lonely grief. As you can see in this recreation of what the Phaedo may have looked like, Everyone in this is everyone in the picture is mourning, except for him who's listening to Socrates. Some people are mourning together. These two are mourning together. He's mourning alone. He's mourning alone. These people that are walking away, mourning in their own way as well. He's mourning alone. Alone. And you can also see in Death in the Sick Room, everybody's mourning in their own way. So death and grief are both very lonely. And I would like to thank you for your time and have a good night.